Greetings, greetings, greetings. Back to nature, community, family, uh, network, YouTube, and uh, everyone out there tuning in to our particular content. And it's sort of like a radio that tunes into uh, frequencies and uh, those who are vibrating on this particular energy and can catch our frequency. I want to say greetings and welcome to another fantastic, beautiful episode right here in the Garden of Paradise, aka also known as Back to Nature Organic Farms, right here in the belly and the bosoms of Mother Nature here on the African continent in the country called Kenya in the central region. We want to say Karibu. Karibu is Swahili to say welcome. And so um, with that, we're back with another fantastic, beautiful episode here today. I don't know if you see some of that uh, melanin popping, <laughs> but that relates to uh, what we're going to be talking about in this particular video here today. And so I just want to say uh, it is a pleasure and a joy. Uh, to always come back and connect with the community and the family. It is a pleasure and joy to still be gr uh, gifted with this gift that we call life. Still breathing, still feeling, still thinking. This phenomenon of life is something that we do not take for granted and we always uh, imbibe an attitude of gratitude and so you guys know we approach this particular initiative as a collective and as a family so let's go ahead and get started with that episode today you know who we are and what we do we are back to nature back to nature in a sense, what drives us and what motivates us is we believe that closer we are, the more proximate we are to nature, the more whole, happy, at peace, at ease we are. When we get away from nature, when we become denatured, when we have, in a sense, become isolated from nature and move away from her, we get into an area of life that's not so pleasant. And that's where we have dis-ease, a lack of of ease and so and by the way that's the root word of disease and so we inspire motivate and encourage Kenyans East Africans and beyond to adopt more natural holistic lifestyle approaches towards maintaining your health because if you're healthy there's nothing more that you want to do than to maintain it but if you've lost it sometimes in life we get you know sidetracked and pulled different ways how do we regain how do we rejuvenate how do we revitalize how do we re-energize how do we in a sense regenerate that vitality health because health is wealth and so with that that's who we are and what we do ladies and gentlemen and so Getting into this particular episode here today, it was a beautiful day on the farm. The weather is relatively pristine. Hearing the chirping of the birds was something that is simply magnificent. Being close to the soil, as you guys know from the last couple of videos, we're very uh, near and dear to the soil. Um, and the sunshine was just shining so brilliantly and magnificently on the farm today that I felt it relevant. Pull out the camera and let's make a particular video and episode in a sense celebrating this, I'd have to call it divine essence that is our sun that our entire, that sits at the center of our entire solar system. All the planets that rotate around the sun that shine so magnificently. And we wanted to talk about the sun as it relates to the farm and food production and life in and of itself. And so that's what our episode is today. I'm not sure exactly what we're going to title it. Maybe just the magnificence or the, the magnanimity of the sun or something along those, those lines. So you'll get a chance to see that. But ladies and gentlemen, 
this element of the sun, as you know, when it comes down to, um, to life, and particularly farming, the four most, most important elements are the soil, water, oxygen, and sunlight. Now, sunlight, which we're going to highlight in this important, and by the way, each time we talk about e either which one of these particular elements, that episode is going to make yeah, uh, so it's gonna make it make uh, as if that particular element is the most important. So when you see me talking about the sun here today, it's almost gonna be like, wow, you know, it's like that's an 800 pound gorilla in the room. And I have to say, when you look at our solar system, the sun is absolutely the 800 pound or 8,000 pound gorilla. If you were just going Google, uh, sort of uh, our solar system and the dimensional sizes of our sun in relationship to all the other planets it is um, it's like the sun is almost a million times larger larger than our small earth the small earth is, uh, is almost like a a speck of dust in comparison to the size of the sun and so this solar system is so very important now when it comes down to our particular farming it is something that is indispensable and right before I pull the camera off the tripod to sort of have a walk and have a wonderful discussion on it I just want to say this guys when it comes down to farming and food production there it's a very uh, complex um, operation it's a very there's a lot of complexity that goes into it and it's not and it's not just the hardware but it is hard hardware and software and so let me give this analogy what you're watching me on right now either through a phone or a computer a hard desktop or a iPad or something along those lines you have the actual hardware that contains the microchips or the screen the battery etc but in order for that hardware to be effective and in order for that hardware uh, to actually communicate or play this video for you there is an operating system there is software and it is the marriage of the hardware and the software is what allows for the dynamic functionality of technology now guess what if you haven't been told the highest most advanced most cutting-edge scientific technology in the world ever known to man or woman is earth water air and sunlight this is a kind of technology that man cannot actually create as a matter of fact Man uses these elements and the elements that come out of them, the periodic table, in order to create the technology that is used, right? And so, when we are farmers and farming, to be cognizant and conscious of the technological intelligence that permeates this entire sphere this entire realm that we call time and space really enhances the farming really allows for the farming to take for the to the farmer uh, to take on a whole different element and that's why we're going to talk here about uh, part of the software and so some people have accused me and I will uh, rightly take on the moniker that uh, we are a philosopher farmer or farmer philosopher because we understand the software that is running through the six inches between the two ears of a farmer determines the results and the output most people do not really understand that the hardware is probably you know 20 percent of what goes into farming.
the software, the six inches that are operating, and particularly the philosophy, the ideas, what's driving the farmer is so very key and important and a lot of times it lacks. And that's what we have a chance to share with the, uh, with the family and community when we make these videos, is we get a chance to delve and you get a chance to hear me sort of elaborate and elucidate uh, in terms of some of the philosophy uh, the thinking, the software that drives farming and that drives food production. And so today we're going to sort of delve into a little bit of this idea and the software uh, of what the sun and how the sun is in a sense plays a, such an important role uh, here on the farm. So hopefully this makes some sense and hopefully it'll resonate and we'll be glad if you go ahead and like, comment, share, all the good stuff we do here in uh, social media as we get into today's episode. Let me, so let me grab the um, phone off the camera and let's go ahead and uh, get into a little bit of the software of the sun as it relates to the farm and the importance role that it plays. So let me go ahead and grab this particular camera here. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls, let's get rocking and rolling here today. We find ourselves here on the farm, actually in phase one, block C, actually right near the entrance um, of this particular section of the farm. When I pan this way, you have a chance to see the water tower. The water tower is always that sort of demarcation on the farm that gives us our locus. And now, here in this section of the farm, you know, we're always going through um, the rotation of crops, and that's so very important to manage the nutrients on the farm, to manage. Um, you know, even pests and diseases, um, what goes into the soil, you know, etc. And so in this section of the farm here, we've laid down what we'll call part of the cruciferous vegetables family. And the cruciferous vegetables are very important vegetables that fall into the popular names of things such as kale, such as sukuma wiki, such as collard greens, such as, uh, I believe, cabbages fall into them, uh, broccoli and things along those lines. And if you were to Google cruciferous vegetables, they have something so very unique that only they possess in the quantity and the amount that they possess. And what that is, ladies and gentlemen, is what we'll call sulforaphane. Sulforaphane. And sulforaphane has been proven and shown and, and these... Uh, great studies have been done by John Hopkins University and a number of others that they are powerful anti-cancer um, uh, uh, elements that allow to regain health. So cruciferous vegetables are wonderful. Uh, obviously, uh, we, we recommend that you take them in the form of salads. Um, and when they're raw former, you get the most beneficial, of course, if they're organic, most beneficial. But even if you steam, cook, saute, you know, etc., they're beneficial. But what I wanted to speak in the main focus of the talk here or the sharing here today is what happens when... The sun, I'm focusing, let's see how innovative this camera is if I zoom directly into the brilliance of the sun. <laughs> Anyways, 
the sun, when it beams down onto the earth and connects with plants, something magical happens. And that magic is reflected in the greenery that you see in and around us. Why plants are so magnificent is because plants have this tremendous ability and intelligence to capture the sunlight in the form of their leaves and in capturing the sunlight it stores it in the fibers that make up the different plants the fruits and vegetables that we look at and it takes on the green color and that green color is what we humans have titled chlorophyll and chlorophyll is such a phenomenal sort of production or manifestation of creation and of sunlight. Chlorophyll, if you were to Google it up, wow, we're giving people homework. See, don't just be lazy, YouTube watch. <laughs> chlorophyll, actually, if you were to Google chlorophyll, and hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the blood of us humans. Chlorophyll is the blood of plants. And if you were to look at the molecular structure, once you Google chlorophyll, just two words, chlorophyll space hemoglobin, and when you hit enter, go to images. And when you go to images, you're going to see that the molecular, molecular structure of hemoglobin is 99% identical to the molecular structure of hemoglobin. And vice versa, hemoglobin is a direct reflection of chlorophyll. One of the reasons why green juices are so very powerful. Because the green juices allow for, when you consume them, particularly in their raw form, because there is a match, very little digestion, very immediately it's able to absorb the chlorophyll uh, that is in the green juices or even when you cook or eat the, a salad or vegetable in that regards. So we're just walking here to a different section of the farm. As you know, we're always uh, going through uh, farm uh, crop rotation. Uh, different places in the farm always having a chance to include uh, beans in the section of the farm it puts nitrogen in the soil but observe the green because what you're looking at when you're looking at any green form of life plants you're looking at captured sunlight and not only is it chlorophyll that is captured, but on top of the chlorophyll, we're also able to find a number of other dynamic elements in plants. So we're walking into phase B. We're walking into phase B, or second phase, of the farm, and um, with that, we're having a chance to 
once again observe the greenery that we are surrounded by. Here's where we have the avocados, but you look around and see the beans, you know, etc. So, in one of the things that also the plants do, and by the way, we have a small bed here of some cilantro. We call it dania here in Kenya. never get tired of the smell and aroma. By the way, I just want to say, if you look at the power of water when it meets sunlight, this is the section of the farm that had our drip irrigation. And the drip irrigation, um, if you're looking here, these are about this planted about the same size, same time as the ones we just came from in block uh, in phase one block C but because the drip lines bring direct uh, water to the plants we have the opportunity to get much more growth so one of the things though as we sort of uh, wind down the message we're going to just share today is when the sunlight hits the plants, fruits, and the vegetables, and the intelligence that's in the seed, whether we're looking at an avocado, such as this, and when that avocado is grown and sprouted, there's an intelligence in there. And that intelligence not only uh, allows for the trees to grow and, and develop, but also has in, within its DNA structure what to do with sunlight. And it turns the sunlight into an avocado. Versus a banana tree turns the sunlight into bananas. Now, in this capturing of the sunlight, it also produces some very other unique and interesting things that the plants and the trees and the fruits and the vegetables, vegetables have. Such as elements like enzymes, nutrients, uh, micronutrients, phytochemicals, phyto um, uh, nutrients in those in those regards, and all these things are wonderful for giving us life, for providing us energy, for giving the ability for us to thrive as humans, and all of this is captured and would not be possible without all oh, the sunlight is sort of hiding from here today. I mean, at this moment, in that regard. Nonetheless, we had a chance to have a small, small uh, insight into what sunlight has to uh, offer and share. In humans, when we take in sunlight, it converts it to vitamin D um, and so many other great, wonderful things. And so understand that when you bring nature to you in the form of a plant in your house, when you bring nature into you, particularly with live, live green juices and uh, salads, uh, you are drinking, consuming direct sunlight that has taken form and shape and that yes it might be coming as a, an avocado or it might be coming as a watermelon but those are simply vehicles that store the energy of the sun and those fibers go through your digestive system and eventually 
have a chance to pass through uh, and that's where we go to the bathroom number two and then clean out the system but what's left over are soluble fibers what passes is what we call non-soluble fibers that were simply a vehicle for capturing the powerful elements and the nutrients and the vitamins and the minerals which is broken down sunlight and the chlorophyll you know and the enzymes etc the non-soluble uh, I mean the soluble ones are the ones we can absorb and we're able then to take in and through our digestive system extract that liquid sunlight because it's liquid even when you chew that's what chewing is about chewing and digesting you're breaking down and separating the fibers from the actual liquid sunlight and all the other elements and nutrients and minerals we talked about so the power of the sun and I think this is a wonderful place to wind our video down today. Ah, the software that drives the hardware of what we do here as farmers. I want to thank you all, say gratitude for continuing to tune in, for continuing to uh, engage what we're doing here back to nature. With that, um, continue to take a few steps towards nature because nature will take a whole lot of steps towards you and the therapeutic benefits that come from that are innumerable and um, I just want to say give thanks thank you peace and blessings God bless we are out and a sunshining day for each and every one of you